Alright, so nice to have all of you here on bright, sunny Saturday afternoon in the fall. It's almost like spring. Thank you for coming this morning. Uh, my name is Cleora McGee and I'm the chair for the City of Flint Charter Review Commission. And we're so grateful to have you. The Charter Review, as you know, you elected nine of us back in May. And again, we're grateful for, you, for selecting us and we plan to do a good job for you. I'd like to uh, first introduce you to our commissioners. And here's one right here. Thank you. Our, our in-house photographer. <laughs> Mr. Charles Metcalf. Is this when I give my speech, my uh, commercial? Yes. <laughs> um, would you stand to um, Ms. Marsha Wesley? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Our Vice Chair, Mr. John Cherry. Mr. Brian Larkin. Um, outside, oh, there's Mr. Jim Richardson. And who am I missing that's in the room? <laughs> How can I just hide? She's responsible for this day. Oh. <laughs> Heidi Panna. She's the chair for the Public Outreach Committee. And so we wanted to come to you today. We wanted to bring as many people together today because we wanted to know what do you think about the Flint Charter? What We wanted your input. We wanted your opinions. We want your concerns on how the charter should be written. And um, we've been meeting for the last three months. Uh, we've uh, formed our committees. We have the Public Outreach Committee, which is responsible for today's event. We have our Finance Committee and our Rules Committee. And our Rules Committee is that committee that we will be guided by when we actually do the revision of the Charter. And so we're happy to have all of you here today. Um, I'd like to thank the um, University of Michigan, Flint, for, this, uh, for allowing us to be here today and also for this wonderful food that they provided for us. And um, also I'd like to thank the uh, City of Flint, of course, um, especially um, the clerk's office, Inez Brown, the city clerk, for their assistance because they're part of our guiding team as well. And also um, Ms. Regina, I almost forgot the last one. Lori, <laughs> Regina Lori is going to be our facilitator today. And, I, I, and I'm, I'm very thankful for uh, Ms. Laura because she, one of the things she did, she's out of town now. She lives in Atlanta. She came back to Flint to do this program for us. So we're very grateful. And so um, I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Lawson. He's going to uh, speak for uh, the Chancellor, Ms. Borrego. And I'll get to him in just a moment. But I just, but just want to let you know some of the other folks that are in the room, and I'm grateful to see our chief of police here today. Uh, also, um, I want you to know that I'm grateful my pastor is here today, Pastor Malik Shabazz from the True Gospel Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Pastor, for joining us. Uh, also, we have Councilwoman Vicki Van Buren. We have former Councilman uh, Dale Wayhill. Raise your hand, okay? And we also have Judge, former Judge Donlin, who was legal assistance back in 1974. So we we're really grateful for that. And so at this time, um, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Dave Lossing, who is the Director of Government Relations for the uh, school. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Madam Chair. It's a, it's a pleasure to host the kickoff meeting for the Flint Charter Commission. Uh, the work that you're going to be doing today and over the next year is important civic work for the City of Flint. Uh, we are glad to be your host, and we stand ready to assist the Charter Commission in anything they need uh, going forward, uh, because we believe uh, as a university uh, that our students, our faculty, and staff need to be civically engaged in the community that we serve. So we stand ready to help you. Uh, please call on us at any time you need our assistance. And uh, just want to you know, share that information on behalf of our Chancellor Susan Borrego, who wasn't able to be here today, uh, but she applauds everybody who ran for it and was elected to the Charter Commission uh, because it's, it's going to be fun but tough work at the same time uh, because you hold the, the, the future of, of Flint's hands, of, or Flint's future in your hands. 
and uh, this is a great kickoff. We also want to thank Chief Tolbert uh, because up on the north side of campus by the Wayne Mass White Building, we're doing a 3 and 3 basketball tournament which kicked off this morning. 11 o'clock is touch a truck as well. Uh, so we have a lot of cool emergency vehicles and we might have some, some cool gear from the Ann Arbor campus on campus today. So when you're done here, head over to North Campus uh, by the William S. White Building and go touch a truck. It's going to be a great community event that uh, the Chief works with our uh, Department of Public Safety Ray Hall. And they've done this event the last three or four years. So on behalf of the University, thank you for coming and have a great day at uh, Go Blue. Thank you so much. I'd also like to take, thank the team from uh, University of Michigan, the Event Center, for providing uh, the wonderful services today. And also, uh, this one person in that work, Mr. Paul Herring, who's back there, he's doing our video, video he's the videographer for, for today, but he also is the, um, our videographer at the City of Flint when we have our meetings. And so we, not only today, but we invite you to come out uh, every, uh, second and, and uh, fourth Thursday, we have our general meetings, and we also have committee meetings in between. So don't make this your last time. There will be opportunities that you'll hear a little bit later on how you can become involved. We want you to stay involved in some manner in, uh, in, in, in working with us to help us write or rewrite or revise the city charter. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you our facilitator, Ms. Regina Lori. Can clear our hands and yourselves and hands are coming out on the Saturday morning. So um, my role, as many of you know, for the past years that I've been doing community engagement work, is to make sure that uh, we have an overall effective process and we um, really obtain our goals. Right? Is that fair? Right. And so this meeting goes till noon, but that does not mean the process ends at noon. Okay. I want to value your time. So with that said, you all have a folder. And so in that folder, please, we have, you have an agenda for today, right? So it's my job in collaboration with the Charter Commission and you to make sure we stay in alignment with that agenda. So I want to make sure that for today, from 10:19 right now until we adjourn at noon, the, this is the purpose for the community, you to learn about the charter review. Because there's definitely been rumblings in the community that you're wondering, like, what have they been doing? Right? So, this morning you're going to really find out. Then there's time throughout the day that we have an intentional um, exercise for you to start that process of providing your input. So, the second, you want to get initial feedback from you to form and guide the charter review process. Third, to share about ways to get involved with the charter. So as we were settling in, I directed your attention to a form also in your folder called Charter Review Advisory Committee, front and back. So definitely, they will remain true that you become involved in the process. So we want you to fill that out. And with anything, um, we need some kind of group agreement to make sure that we have this wonderful, authentic, active engagement process. So here are like four group agreements that we hope that you will buy into. One, focus on the meeting purpose. Now, I am the one that knows when there's several elements in the room, one being water, right? Is that fair? So I want to just make sure that it's dropped right here, but that's not the focus today. But I know it is the focus currently. Is that fair? Okay. So I had to say water, but we're not going to focus on water. So two, actively engage. Some of us, how many of you were ever, you were part of the 1974? Raise your hand if you were part of 1974 charter. Give me a hand right here. Okay, so he was part of that. So definitely, so we know that's in the room. How many of you, this is your first time ever hearing about the charter? Raise your hand. So I'm always trying to really gauge. So we come at this at different levels, right? So we have one who's present 1974 to one. This is your first day. Okay. 
So that's in the room. Three, we want you to actively listen, listen with your full being. So there are different commissioners that will come up and they're going to kind of like really share what they've been doing so far. So the hope is that you're actively listening with your full being. If you have a call, whatever, we will ask that you take the call out. And once again, the restrooms, when you go out, they're immediately to the left and around the corner. Okay? Finally, stay committed to the process. And what I said, although this ends at noon, the process continues for like, what, two, three years? Or longer, right? So, up to, one, to up to, one, two, three. So we're hoping that you stay engaged and committed, right? Okay? So, are we okay with these group agreements? Is there one that you're just like, no, I cannot stay committed? No, I need to answer the phone. So, show of hands, if we're all committed to these group agreements, we will continue the process. Looks good. Okay. So, right now, we're going to, John's coming up, right? Okay, so right now we're going to have John, followed by Brian, then Heidi, and then you will see me again. We'll get into a uh, discussion. Okay? Once again, thank you. And please, this is where we start listening with our full being. So, John Cherry. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming today. I'm going to give a uh, brief review of the presentations that you're going to receive. And then I'm going to go into that first part about what is the charter. So we're going to talk about what it, what is a charter, what is a city charter, why does it exist, uh, what is the CRC, the Charter Review Commission, that's the uh, people that were introduced at the beginning, what, what is our task, talk about a little bit about the charter review process, what we've done so far, where we're going, uh, how you can get involved, and then as Regina had talked about, a little bit about the uh, we're going to do a group exercise so we can get some feedback from all of you. All right, so the state constitution uh, very briefly addresses home rule cities insofar as noting that they exist and then really the meat and details of home rule cities, which city, uh, the city of Flint is a home rule city, uh, is determined by uh, statute. that primary statute that addresses that is the Home Rule City Act. And so that talks about uh, really uh, what are home rule cities, what are their powers versus say townships. Uh, and so the Home Rule City Act establishes a charter as really the governing document uh, for a city. And that document uh, essentially acts like a constitution. The U.S. Constitution you know, establishes our Congress, our Supreme Court, the Office of President. It tells us what the powers of the Congress are uh, and how they relate to uh, the citizens. Similarly, the Charter of the City establishes our Council, determines how ordinances are passed, uh, etc. And then it also looks at how the citizens engage with their city in terms of uh, governing themselves. So the first thing that is done when an area and a group of citizens determines that they want to become a city is they write their charter because that's the foundation for everything else that uh, happens thereafter. Then the charter, the charter itself, and this is very similar for cities that are starting or cities like ourselves which are just looking at it uh, new. They elect charter commissioners who then draft up the charter and send it to the state, the governor's office. The governor's office then reviews that document, provides feedback to the, to the charter commission. And after the charter commission uh, is, is happy with that, it's sent to the voters yourselves to uh, either approve or tell the charter commission they need to do the job again. <laughs> So what are some of the things that you see in all city charters? And now, Regina referenced those uh, folders that you have. All of you should have the City of Flint Charter that was um, passed in 1974. 
And if you go, go through those first couple of pages, uh, you'll see there's a bunch of different topics under there. And those are going to be things, all of these you will see at different portions in our charter. These are things that the Home Rule City Act says need to be addressed in every city charter. Okay? So the selection of mayor, whether that's by election, whether that's uh, whether the council chooses the mayor, these are, these are things that, that need to be in the charter. The election of council or commission. So that means how do you elect your council? Are, is your council elected by wards? Is the council elected at large? How many commissioners are there? Or how many councilmen are there? It addresses selection of the, the clerk, treasurer, assessor, board of reviews, and other officers. So, for example, in the city of Flint, our city clerk is selected by the city council. In the city of Dearborn, the city of clerk is elected by the people. So there's different options that, that, uh, that citizens choose on how they select those various officers. It also addresses nominations and elections. So that uh, one of those choices might be, do we have nonpartisan elections for our city officers? Do we have partisan elections for our city officers? Today, our city officers are selected in nonpartisan elections. Also determines what is, it, what is required to be nominated uh, within uh, the election process. Right now, a city council person has to receive 100 signatures of registered voters in order to get on the ballot. Qualifications, duty, and compensation of officers, also uh, determined by the city charter. And our city charter has a uh, board that determines compensation, for example. Tax rate, uh, no, generally no city can have over 20 mills on their tax rate. Um, and then also some cities have, as, as Flint does, a city income tax. In terms of how we handle appropriations, how we address the public peace, uh, health and safety, and then also how we adopt ordinances. Ordinances are, are the local laws that are within the city. So you, know, you have your U.S. laws, your state laws, and then your local laws, which we call ordinances. These are some items that may be in a charter. This is not an exhaustive list. There are certainly many uh, additional items that could potentially be in a charter, and we see that in the city of Flint as well. Um, the borrow, how we borrow money, uh, it, how we install sewer, water, and electric, the establishment of public utilities, special assessments. A special assessment is, uh, for example, how we pay for our garbage uh, collection and how we pay for our streetlights right now. Everybody, all parcels are assessed a set fee. That is through a special assessment district that is citywide. Some cities have special assessment district. You can have special assessment districts that are uh, just portions of the city to pay for specific uh, uh, services. The acquisition of property, condemnation of property, that governing how you do that. Uh, franchises, for example, what is a franchise? For example, uh, Comcast has a franchise agreement with the city of Flint to provide uh, cable service. City Charter can, can uh, address public transportation, regulations of street public ways, License, how, we, how the city handles licensing and regulation. Not necessarily all the details of licensing and regulation, but setting that framework on how we address it. Potential appropriations of uh, funds to nonprofits, civil infractions, not what each of those civil infractions are, but how you uh, govern that process. And then public nonprofit medical facilities. And we actually have a public nonprofit medical facility in, in Hurley here uh, in Flint, one of the few cities. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn this over to Brian, who's going to talk about how the process uh, is that we're going through and what we've done so far and where we're going. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. So, so as John laid out what a charter is, that's unique to Michigan. Anywhere throughout Michigan, if you're going through the process, you're under those same rules. Everything that he mentioned is, is uniform across the board. Well, specific to Flint in here, how do we get to this place? How do we get to the point right now where we're having this discussion, where we have these elected officials who are talking about this document? Well, in November of last year, the residents voted that they wanted to, the question, there was a ballot question before them of whether or not we wanted to revise our existing city charter. Majority of Flint residents voted yes. 
And as a result, in order to do that, we had to elect a Charter Review Commission. In May of this year, candidates interested, uh, members of the community applied and ran for those positions and were voted the nine, the seven individuals that you see before you today, and then two additional ones, uh, Commissioner Barry Williams and Commissioner Victoria McKenzie, we were elected. If you look inside your folders on the left side, you'll see a brief bio and pictures of each of the nine individuals. So if you see us anywhere in the community. Uh, also, there's contact information that we can be reached at, a uh, telephone number and email addresses that work for uh, each of us. And so that's how we got to this point here. The city of Flint residents voted and said, we want to revise our charter. In order to do that, we need to elect a charter review commission. May 5th, we elected our nine individuals, and we're expected as representatives to represent the entire city of Flint. That's unique, if uh, many of, have mentioned before, we're revising the charter from 1974. In the 1974 process, the election went um, based on wards, and here, this year, we did it on a, it was a citywide, based on the interpretation of the laws, a citywide election, so each and every commissioner is responsible for the city as a whole, and so we're indebted to the citizens of all areas and all wards of the city as we're trying to write this document. So, um, the first thing that we did as a group is got together and look at what we have already. We, we've begun that process. We're reaching out to individuals who served on that 1974 Charter Commission and brought them before our commission as a whole. And we're looking at what are our choices. So when you have a, a charter and um, your city's constitution, when you're looking to change it, you have a few choices. You can do an amendment. And if you look actually in the one, the charter that we have printed for you in your agenda, you'll see a paper insert which outlines some amendments that we've made over the past years from 1996 to 2014. So when you think about amendments to the charter, that, that's little changes. You want to change specific something here, if you want to change the date of something there, that's always an option. That's a, a smaller scale thing and you don't need a full commission to go to that detail. But because we're a commission, we can also look at a full rewrite of our existing charter. We can take everything out, and as long as we stick to the things that John said, that's the reason we introduced that first, as long as we stick to those things that have to be in there, anything else from there, we're at liberty to, to kind of create based on the input of residents. And so, ultimately though, our job is to propose a charter. The adoption of it, is on the residents. The residents are the individuals who ask for this process, and they're the ones who get the final say on whether or not the document reflects what they want. So we've been elected to help draft it, but we have to put it before the citizens for a vote. Um, as we were elected, was mentioned earlier, based on uh, the state legislation, we have up to three years to serve in our position, and we can bring a charter proposal before the residents a, a maximum of three times. But the goal would be to do it one time, and that means that we've gotten the input from the residents, that we're putting together something that's representative of the wants and needs of a great majority of the community, and once it's out there, it's something people buy into. And so, when we got together, the first thing I mentioned, we looked at the 74 Charter, we organized the structure of our organization. The first thing we did was identify our committee leadership. You heard from our chair, chairperson, Cleo McGee, she step out and our vice chairperson there you go right there they got a clear and our vice chairperson john cherry they were elected the leaders of this organization they're tasked with both um serving but also giving us guidance and direction as we we go through much of the work we did and then when we looked at from there how do we accomplish some of our major goals and one of the things we recognized we were going to need a finance committee the finance committee looks at the funds we have and then how do we budget that to accomplish what we need and what are other areas that we can leverage for support so that and when we established that committee we elected the chairperson commissioner marshall wesley is the chairperson of the finance committee and then from there we looked at okay so when we budget it and when we get the funds to make this happen what's the process how do we really identify writing and going through the steps of this and so we established a rules committee. A rules committee identify how meetings will be conducted, how we make decisions, and how we really ultimately move to a point of adopting a full draft. The chairperson of the rules committee is Commissioner Victoria McKenzie, who was unable to be here today. And then finally, while we, we are nine people and we're elected and we can go through the process to making it, the way for it to really be successful is to identify how we can embed this into the community as a whole. And so we established a public outreach committee. And our public outreach chairperson is Heidi Fanoff, who is the individual who's responsible for mostly all of us being here today. And the vision of how do we embed this process from the beginning to the end, not just 
at the end of uh, telling you what, what's come up with, but how do we get the input throughout the process to guide and draft in each step of the way? And so she chairs that committee, one of the first things they produced was the concept of establishing a charter advisory committee. It's fine. Uh, charter advisory committee, we mentioned that a couple of times, that inside the charter advisory committee are community residents who are, um, who, have taken a, who want to take a deeper interest in the process, who want to stay informed, want to help guide, and then also lead, lead from a, a resident's perspective on some direction that, that we're going and finding ways to help improve, and also finding ways to help communicate the message in both directions. So individuals who want to stay really engaged with the process are encouraged to become a member of the Charter Advisory Committee. And the interest forms, to become a member, you fill out the interest form that's inside of your agenda and you turn it in to us either today or we, they'll be accepted later for individuals who aren't here. They'll be posted online at the City of Flint website soon and can be accepted at City Hall or any um, Charter Committee member can accept them as well. And so I mentioned one of the first tasks of the public outreach community, if you think about any organization, your company, your job, your school, wherever, there's usually some type of overarching mission or vision or, or things that help you determine why we do what we do. Because as we go through this process, we're gonna have some, some tough decisions to make and we're gonna have to really think, and what, we, what we wanted to start with was a basic guiding principle for how we wanna go about this and how we wanna go through our decision-making process. And our guiding principles were established by our Public Outreach Commission, our Public Outreach Committee, and they are the City of Flint Charter Review process will be open to all citizens. The commission will ensure that public voices are recognized and that information is open and accessible to the public. The commission will go where the people are and will reach out to residents and businesses from all wards. The commission will seek to engage and educate the community on the city of Flint Charter and will consider all ideas heard in the community. And so this isn't just an idea, this is, these are our principles that we want to go throughout. If you actually look at your agenda, we have it printed at the bottom when we conduct our meetings, we have it posted on all of the materials to keep it right in front of us to make sure that as we are going through this process, we need to keep that forefront, that we need to be doing these things because if we do that and we follow those principles, we'll have a document and we'll have a charter that's fully reflective of the citizens and it will be adopted on one chart. You don't have to use two. And so uh, once we got that established, we, it was time to get to work. And so one of the first things we really need to do was get organized. So as a charter commission, we, in our bi-monthly meetings, we, um, the first we had the guiding principles established, but then we developed our rules. As we mentioned, the rules committee just uh, recently concluded and the rules were formally adopted by the commission. And there we crafted and directed the outreach strategy for our charter review process. Heidi's gonna come forth in a minute and really break down what that outreach strategy is like and what the charter review process consists of. But we needed to think about this from a long-term point of view. When we got into this, we didn't want to just jump in and start, you know, what, as they say, uh, shooting first and aiming second. We wanted to look at how do we develop a process to put together a full comprehensive product. And so what's our, what's our outreach strategy? What's our process of writing the review? And then what do we need as residents? Because even we're elected as commissioners, but essentially we are residents as well. What kind of training and information do we need to help us make the best decisions possible? And so through that, we had the assistance of the Michigan Municipal League who came in and provided us with a wealth of knowledge about what some of the core things that exist in the charter, what some of the best practices here in the state, and what some of the things going on nationwide, because really our opportunities are limitless. This is a great opportunity to really shape our future, and that information they provided for us will hopefully help us be better commissioners. And finally, we um, got more information from our city elected officials, our department heads, and individuals from that we invited to our commission meetings. And as we uh, mentioned, individuals who were present earlier, I want to take time to acknowledge our mayor, Mayor Dan Walling, who's the opportunity to join us. He also has presented, came, took the time to really provide insight to the commission about how some of the things are going on and, and the direction and the entire uh, City of Flint staff has been leading us both in kind of understanding what we have already, what's in place, what's our structure like, so we know the ground point from which we're working to move forward. So thank you to the mayor, thank you to all of the City of Flint elected staff who have supported us. And now I'll be turning it over to Heidi so she can uh, walk us through the process. Brian, 
And thank you everybody for being here today. It's really important that you're here and that you're part of this process and I'm really glad that you took the time to, to be here today. So in September, here we are at the kickoff meeting. Uh, this is really, for us, the official beginning of reviewing the charter. And a couple of things we've been doing in this month, uh, publishing a survey, which you'll get a little bit later on the, in the event, as well as reaching out and getting volunteers for the advisory committee. So that, those are you know, the steps we've been focusing on during the month of September, as well as preparing for this meeting. So then, moving forward over the next few months, we, we're thinking about ways to um, break this down into manageable pieces that we can all work together. And our thought was to kind of think of this as a charter review book club. That's why you all have one of these books here today. And we're going to be going through the, this book club together as a community. And the Charter Review Advisory Committee is really going to be key in this effort. We're going to take a look at each of the nine articles. We're going to review them individually. And during the months of October and November, we're going to be focusing on Article 1. Uh, Article 1 covers general administrative items. Then, November, December, we're going to move on to Article 2, Elections and Representation. And I also want to make sure to let you know that this is where you know, we anticipate being at different steps throughout the process. These, these months, see they're kind of you know, squished together because if we notice that one particular topic is really important and needs more conversation, we're going to continue to have conversations on that. So this is a flexible timeline and we want to make sure to let you know to, um, uh, that it could be potentially subject to change. After uh, that, we'll move on to Article 3, which is the City Council and Legislative Branch. Uh, I want to mention that if you open up the charter, you'll see that each of the sections starts with a number. So when we're saying Article 3, it's the items that start with 3 dash and then some numbers after that. Um, March and April will be focusing on Article 4, um, Mayor and Executive Branch. Then May and June, Articles 5 and 6, which include civil service staffs and boards. July and August will be Article 7, 8, 9, Finance, Utilities, and then kind of some other items, miscellaneous items that are in there. So our goal is to complete a first draft review of this charter by August 2016. I say if needed because, as you mentioned earlier, we could go through this whole review process and say 74, they had it right. We're all you know, done and continuing to keep as is. So this you know, complete first draft by August 16. Um, also remember that this is a dynamic process and it you know, may shift and change just a little bit as we get going on it. Um, we do have to send the entire uh, document to the state for review as part of the process. Uh, has to be reviewed by the governor's office. They actually could say, oh, we recommend you add da 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 da, but the Charter Commission has the ability to say we either think those are good suggestions or no, we like, we like what our communities came up with. So we actually have the ability to tell the governor no. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, and also, there is a legal review process through this that's ongoing. So. Uh, as we are developing and looking at this, we're working with the city uh, legal staff. They're providing us some feedback and support um, to make sure that the wording is properly crafted. But we also are going to, when it, um, the time comes, retain another attorney to also provide a second look at the charter. So I think this is really key for everyone here today. But why is this charter important? Why are you here? Why stay involved in this effort? Well, it's important because I know most of the folks here, um, and for those that I don't know, I know that you're here because you're really involved in the community and you want to make a difference in your city. And the charter is a document that the city runs by, so understanding this charter is, is powerful. It's powerful for citizens to be able to understand how to uh, make change within their government. And through this effort, you can actually affect change in your community. And we haven't had an opportunity to look at this charter since 1974. Um, so it's a really amazing time to be part of this particular process. And you can be that change that you want to see in your city. Without your involvement, this document may not turn out to be representative of the city. So it's really important that you stay involved because being part of this process will help make the charter a document that really represents the community, and, and that's our focus, is to make sure that this is the people's charter. 
So, ways to get involved. There's lots of different ways to get involved. You've heard about the Charter Review Advisory Committee. There's a little bit of information on the back side of the interest form that tells about the advisory committee. And the advisory committee will be meeting every month. We have proposed meeting on the uh, first Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. There is a meeting calendar for the next three months of all the, the Charter Commission meetings. So you know when we're going to be meeting and where we're going to be meeting. For the advisory committee, the first meeting will be October 1st at City Hall. And some interesting things about this advisory committee, there's not a set number of residents or people that can be from the specific wards. It's very open. Anybody who wants to participate can participate. If you want to come in halfway through the process, that's great. We want all voices heard. Also, there's going to be a rotating chairperson. So um, not the same person running each meeting, and the Charter Commission will provide some supports in facilitation so that you can be you know, prepared to run a meeting. It also can give folks uh, more skills. There's a Charter Review Commission meeting, so we are going to be meeting twice a month, and you're always welcome to come to those. And please, follow along with the Charter Review Book Club and be involved reading through the Charter and providing, providing feedback. There's a survey that we're going to be handing out a little bit later that's um, also really important to get some information on where everybody feels um, today, the important things that they want us to start looking at and focusing on for the Charter. Also, after you leave here today, go out and share this information with your neighbors, people in your uh, church, folks that you are friends with. Share this information with your community. And also, uh, we have these meetings uh, recorded. They are going to be online. We're still getting them online. But they are also being uh, put on Channel 17. And Paul, I think it's Sunday at noon? Sunday at noon and Monday at 10 p.m. Sunday at noon and Monday at 10 p.m. So Sunday at noon and Monday at 10 p.m., if you can uh, find out what's going on with the charter, if you wanted to watch that instead of coming down to City Hall, that's always a, a great thing to do. We also have uh, a phone number you can reach us at at City Hall. There's our website. Uh, we have you know staff through the clerk's office, so you can reach us through there. And you also have on your individual sheets our phone numbers and emails. And so all of the charter commissioners would, if you'd like to contact us directly or individually, you are more than welcome to as well. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. With that. I'm going to turn it back over to Regina. How are we doing? Is that a lot of information? Yeah. Great information? Yeah. So far, worth your time. Okay, so this time, uh, once again, uh, you know, on the agenda, we have a the group exercise, uh, creating a shared vision of government. So take it out right now. But before then, I'm going to definitely bring up Kiora. Uh, but before then. I would like to hear, um, what did you hear so far that kind of popped out that you were like, yes, I want to get engaged and remain engaged. What did you hear so far? I'm going to take like three or four in the room. And I'm going to walk the room because many of you know me. <laughs> okay, thank Denise So Denise Yarbrough said what stuck out to her was the advisory committee. Why was that valuable to you? Because the president can be a part of the process. She said the reason why the advisory committee was so valuable because residents can be part of the process. And building on the common theme and pattern of what each commissioner stated was that it's their role to do what? Listen to the community. Right. So it's their role to kind of like draft something, right? Right? So they so they they need your engagement, right? Someone else. So I heard advisory. What else? What popped out to you? Yes. And Jane speaks so, so. <laughs> Jane Richardson, the word review. Jane Richardson, the word review. And then flip them to a lot of read, like reimagine it, right? <laughs> so it's kind of building on what we've been doing. So it is a connection. So review, reimagining. Why, Jane, are you, are you saying review? It's not decided. It's not decided. And I know sometimes government, we already think something's already decided, right? Let's be authentic, right? So 
they have said it's not even deciding yet, so they need you. We're reviewing. One more. What is, what's up? Yes. Uh, Bishop Bernardell Jefferson, the community environment and also the plan to extend it out, not just hurry up and get through with it, but work on a plan. And if you need more time, to take time to fulfill that, to pay special attention to what we really need in this review. Can someone repeat what she said? She said a lot. Synthesize it for What did she say? Oh, yes. A literary. Okay. Um, basically, she was trying to say to get, get more engaged, get more organized, basically. And it's more long term of that, like in three years. And be way more careful. Just way way more, more careful. Yeah, like Brian Larkin said, instead of doing it like once every year, try to get it done at one time. You know, right. And right. Get it right. And I feel good because this is part of history, right? I was, you know, 74, you know, like this is part of history. Right, 2015. So please be thinking about that as she girl makes her way up, and then we're going to get into definitely what we promised for you helping to create that shared government. Thank you, Regina. Just want to take a brief moment. Also wanted to—he's uh, uh, not here—but I wanted to recognize David Roth, who is uh, one of the city attorneys that's working with us, and he will be working with us throughout this process. But I want to take just a moment to bring up Mayor Dane Walling to give us a brief, very brief <laughs> <laughs> remarks. Well, well, thank you for, for the opportunity. And I, I'm just so happy that all of you have taken time to come out and be a part of this. I, I think everything that's said is just right on point, and, and there's not a lot that I need to add to it. Um, we know that our, our democratic process here has been bruised and battered in recent years uh, because of a variety of issues at the state and federal level. It's also can be difficult to do the things that we want to do with, with limited resources. But despite that, uh, our community did come together around the comprehensive planning process. This is now another opportunity for the community to come together. And I think the charter commissioners are, are really showing a lot of leadership by taking time to put together a process that involves people from across the entire community. So I compliment you on that. And I'm very glad to see so many of you on a Saturday morning being willing to come and do this hard work because as the work gets harder, a lot of people tend to, you know, fall off. But you all are the ones who are taking time to be a part of this process and you can spread that word and go out with those messages, just like we mentioned, that this is open. This is open to review. It's open to people in every part of the city. It's going to take time, so there's multiple ways that people can get involved. And if you share that message out, then we'll have more and more people involved in this process over time. And that's because of the leadership that the, the Charter Review Commission is showing, but also that each and every one of you are showing uh, by showing up and being a part of it. So uh, this is a process that I've supported. You may not see me or city council members uh, a lot in this, um, because we really believe that it needs to be led by the Charter Commission and that it needs to be led by the citizens. So uh, thank you all again, and we'll get on with the rest of the program. All right. All right? Thank all you. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, um, we is about 40 people, so we're going to ask these two group of tables back here. We want how many to a table? Six to a table. So you kind of reposition yourself to make sure we're using these seven tables to reposition ourselves as seven people at the table. Let's say about two or three minutes because like I said, your time is valuable and I will have you out here by noon. So we'll make sure there's a commissioner at each table. Commissioner at each table. So if you can help me reconvene the room, that would be awesome. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah. Oh, we got some more coming here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Right. So I want to make sure everyone has a table. The commissioner at each table. So during this time, during this time in your folder, there is a uh, worksheet that's titled Charter Review Commission Community Kickoff Meeting, Exercise 1. So please begin filling that out individually. We want to hear, gain your individual thoughts first and foremost. So once it's done, Okay, make sure that we're, that, that we're all having the same common experience. We have the questions up here on the slide as well. With the first one being, what does, do, what does government look like? What does good government look like? Thank you. I'm so glad you all caught that. <laughs> <laughs> what does good government look like? Two, what does bad government look like? Number three, what are some qualities that you, the engaged, active resident, wants to see in your city government? And then final, what are some things that you would like to see in the chart? So between for the next 15 and 20 minutes, you have a commissioner at your table that will not direct the process, but help you engage in the process. So during this time, make sure you are individually answering those questions, and then you're going to start sharing your responses with the people at your table. What needs to happen before you report out? You need to check in with the members at your table that they're in agreement with what you're you're reporting out on. So just check in to make sure that what you put on the, on the poster sheets that that's accurate and, and all their input is on there. So check in right now with the members of your table. <laughs>
Okay, so now we're at the part of the agenda where we want to hear back from the community. So if each spokesperson could please go by their post, if they could please stand by, please. Spokesperson, uh huh. So during this time, you're supposed to check in with your group to make sure because how many of you have been part of a meeting where it's like where they report out. When they report out, they go off script. It's like, we didn't talk about that, <laughs> right? And they start sharing their own answers, right? So make sure. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. So during this time, we have to make sure that group agreement that I introduced that listening with the full being, because this is part is so very important. And you may hear different things repeated. You may hear different things repeated, so let's make sure that we're actively listening. Because as we started the meeting, I wanted to make sure that what the Charter Commission promised for you to learn about the Charter Review. And get your feedback, so that's right now. And then finding the ways for you to become involved. So right now, they, they want to hear your voice. And what's going to happen one of the members from the Charter Commission will type these up. And they'll be online? Okay. They'll be online. So we're going to start with Jim's group back here, right? And she has a mic. So let's make sure. Okay. Hi, we're Group 1, Jim's group. I'm Bishop Jefferson. And what does good government look like? A body by set rules. Uh, simple, efficient and answerable to the people, re representative and responsive to the people, transparent, good leadership skills, honesty and respect, listen to the people, which boils down to that the set rules are the rules that were set by the people, which is the charter. And if we abide by the set rules and have respect, be accountable, be transparent, listen to the people, and it looks like the Charter Review uh, Commission is on the right guidelines. Uh, number two, what does bad government look like? Hidden agendas, constant lies, using dis uh, designated funds for other means, uh, self-centered, selfish, consult, uh, squab constant squabbling, Irrespectable, uh, different, lack of concern for the community. What does bad government look like? Hidden agendas is those agendas that they don't pay attention to the set rules, that they do it their own way. And so we want a, we, we don't want any more bad government. We don't want the squabbling. If you're there for the people, then you have to put the personal agendas aside. What are some, th some uh, qualities that you want to see in your city government? Government for the people and by the people. Reduction of costs where possible. Honesty and truth about leader, leader goals. Cooperative and respect among elected officials. Open to comments. Teamwork. We want a government that's working together that is in that we know you got to cut money, but don't cut it from things that we need in our community. But we know we have to reduce funds. And so we want you to take that in account. Teamwork. What are some things that you would like to see in the charter? Not sure yet, which that's an honest thing because if you're not sure, then you need to take time 
to review it to see what's already there. And so therefore, we, a lot of them was not sure what was in the, in the charter, so continue to revert, review and learn before making amendments. Check it out. A, professionals, a professional city manager in administration. And even though that I know that it was in the charter in 74, mm -hmm. there was only one mayor that got a professional mm -hmm. person to activate that, that, that management skill. So, and a workable plan for the community accountability. Uh, a workable plan, a plan that will work for our community. Not one that you see in Hong Kong that said, we're gonna pick it and bring it back. We need a workable plan for Flint, Michigan and accountability. You got to be accountable. We want to restore ombudsment, independent process for complaints and resolution. We do and see that's why we say there are things in the charter that have been disregarded. So we want to restore ombudsment. Ability to change to meet current times. If when we look at, at how our community is being demolished or broken down then we need to make adjustments, ability to adjust to what's going on right now. Eliminate primary election. Uh, the primary election that we have in August, just have one election and that be set. Mm. That is team one, GMC. Thank you. Team one and team one. Okay, we're gonna move right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot to add. Okay. We don't, because we said a lot of the same things or similar things. We think a good government should be working together for the public good. Uh, the people and the government should be working together. Um, the government should be transparent and uh, it should be accessible and responsive uh, so that citizens are able to govern themselves or to um, address the government and, uh, and, and get results. Uh, the government should always be guided by strong ethical standards and uh, this includes um, uh, integrity and uh, attention to the public good again. Um, and there should be a very high level of communication and public outreach so that the government and the people are always um, well, in communication now, uh, and aware of each other's concerns. A bad government um, is divided, is divisive, and um, always uh, in conflict, argumentative, and uh, it's not result-oriented. Um, bad government is full of roadblocks. Um, it creates uh, a lot of red tape and um, just um, bureaucratic uh, prevention of uh, results and uh, there's a lack of concern in bad government for the public good uh, and the lack of uh, moral sense or ethical sense. Um, we are hoping to see in our government, uh, we'd like to see um, a government with more integrity and uh, uh, a better understanding of uh, the different groups of residents, the, the diversity of the population, better understanding, and uh, also um, a government that understands its job, the government whose, um, whose officials understand their jobs better, and their responsibilities, their roles. Um, and we'd like to see uh, this city being turned around or moved forward by positive efforts, um, a uh, an optimism, a belief, uh, a sense of hope, and then um, a willingness to take steps forward. Um, not just to talk about things or, or just uh, listen to people um, talk about things, but to really take steps and move forward. And uh, there should be also um, an attention to youth, a strong foundation um, should be built uh, among the youth of the city. And um, as far as the new charter is concerned, or the charter in general, uh, we are um, hoping to see a willingness to, um, to maintain some of the principles and some of the features of the previous charter. Um, 
uh, just um, maybe a reluctance to uh, a, a hesitation about about changing too quickly. So um, just a serious attention to what the charter is and to uh, existing policies before rash changes are made um, you know, without sufficient consideration. And be mindful, so the things that you have already been stated, um, just kind of say like, yes, we thought the same thing, so it kind of applies to what we talked about as well. Okay, I'm Tanisha Arbro, and what does good government look like? Government that has order, focused on the needs of the citizens, and the city should follow in that order. People that are elected or selected by the people of the, all the community, leading them in sustaining and de development of the people. Um, basically doing the right thing and all of the above. One that has leadership, that believes in equality for all people, and is compassionate for the people that it serves. Um, a government that abides by the charter of the city, including all branches of government and its departments, working for the best interest of its people. And um, what does bad government look like? Disorder. Government not focused upon the people, instead focused on special interests at the expense of its people. Um, bad government is government that we have now. <laughs> that is not developing the community and, the, and that is critical. More people that work in the city don't live in the city. Self-fulfilling, not working within the parameters of established city government, city government's rules is argumentative, lacking respect for one another and its citizens. Doing nothing and bad leadership, which is leadership with an ego. And what are some of the qualities that you want to see in your city government? Leaders who know the needs of its residents, working on the greatest need first, finishing and proceeding to number two, and so on and so forth in the process, making sure that the process is complete. Um, honesty, intelligence, and that it's progressive. Transparency, honesty, integrity, and commitment. And our last thing is, what are some of the things that you would like to see in the charter? Um, we noted that the Ombudsman's Office, Civil Service, and Human Relations um, should also be restored at their functional um, commissions and reverse residency requirements for working within the City of Flint that includes um, our Police Department, Fire Department, and all City Departments. Rahan, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to this group, okay, Brian's group, okay. All right, for uh, what good government looks like, uh, we said it was financially responsible, uh, efficient and flexible, uh, has a clearly defined structure that remains adaptive as needs change, uh, direction is provided by the people and the voters, uh, policy is then guided by election, elected officials and executed by a competent staff. Uh, constituted by and continuously informed by the ongoing consent of the citizens, serves the common good uh, of all residents, particularly the voiceless and the vulnerable, uh, avoids interfering in areas of social life that are ad adequately overseen by citizens, and ultimately renders itself irrelevant by fostering a strong civil society, uh, willing and able to listen and using wise thoughts for good solutions. Uh, what does bad government look like? Uh, it's difficult to navigate, uh, lack of administrative skill and services, unresponsive, uh, lack of access to government, lacks transparency, uh, doesn't have a sensible uh, budgetary process, uh, could be disruptive to everyday life, uh, those in power are serving their self-interest rather than the people, uh, there's few people and voices in control and lacking broad accountability, and finally doesn't follow the rules. Uh, so we actually might have been a bad government because we combined the last two into one, we didn't follow the rules. Uh, so not only what we'd like to see in the charter itself, but also what we want to see in city government. Uh, are processes that are inclusive and informative, uh, that were forward-looking, growth-minded, while mindful of current conditions. Uh, we have to determine whether or not the process for the charter needs to be, uh, you know, the, the charter needs to be simple or uh, or very prescriptive. Uh, we want to see multi-year budgeting. We'd like to see elected officials that are supported with competent staff. Uh, we want to see a structure that allows for healthy governance. We'd like up-to-date anti-discriminatory provisions. 
Uh, and we, we talked about specific uh, city positions, and ultimately what we determined was we need to have a, a process that defines what needs to be permanent in the charter, while also allowing for ordinance to define other, uh, other city positions. And then uh, finally, uh, we need to define appointed positions uh, to be responsive to what's necessary at the time. Man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before I hand it off to, to Dale, the, um, we're on this, you know, at noon. So this is such a critical punk component, you know, here in your thoughts. Oh, shoot. I'm taking the mic away. Are you okay? See, I can do another resource, right? I can tell you. I can move, right? Virginia, you can use this. So, um, if you're okay with going, you know, if we go like five or ten minutes over, right, I really want to check in with you. It's like a good government steward. I want to make sure I kept my word. <laughs> Is that fair? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand it off to Dale, then the final group, and then I'm going to bring up Cleora and Heidi, because they have to integrate some kind of public comment, right? You have to. It's part of government. Okay. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, our group, uh, for the question, what does good government look like, put the following. Demonstrably energetic and informed and open to ongoing public participation, committed to checks and balances, uh, stays connected to constituents, follow, follows through with constituent concerns. Uh, there's a public process for prioritizing services in all circumstances. Uh, good government administers fairly and equitably for all citizens. Efficient monitoring and review processes are part of good government processes to implement the findings. Uh, mechanisms for accountability are present. And all elected and appointed positions occupied by people, or will be occupied by, by people, who are competent, caring, possess integrity, are well trained, and are well informed. Uh, what does bad government look like? It's inefficient, unresponsive, ego-driven, and self-serving. There's a lack of equity in how different parts of the city are served and heard by bad government, a uh, lack of collaboration among elected officials and within city departments. Uh, bad government is poorly staffed and uh, people are not trained properly. There's poor administrative practices. Uh, bad government is under-resourced, and that would be in terms of both staff and finances, um, and it's unnecessarily bureaucratic. What are some qualities that you want to see in your city government? Uh, follow through, collaborative, collaboration, more facilitation of positive social changes, uh, including the areas of crime, violence, and poverty, uh, more transparency, complete honesty and fiscal practices in particular, consistency, equitable treatment for all people and areas of the city. What are some things that you would like to see in the charter? Now, th this, these aren't based on consensus. This is more of just a list. Um, fewer council persons, redistricting of wards based on a smaller number or fewer council persons, um, term limits for council, two at-large council members, council member just for downtown Flint, uh, go to a weak mayor form of government, hire a professional city manager uh, hired by the council, keep the master plan current and continually executed so it doesn't sit on the shelf. And then lastly, um, what people would like to see, mechanisms built in to ensure accountable and effective planning and processes in all areas of city government, uh, including a focus on crisis planning. Thank you. Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, at this point, I think pretty much everything has been said, and I can't really keep track of it, so I'm just gonna go through everything really, really quickly, though. Uh, so we thought that good government is transparent and honest, responsive and responsible. Uh, good government provides services effectively and efficiently. Good government listens to the people and is accessible to the people. It's focused on the citizens, their needs, and working with them and it's professional, smart, and qualified, and accountable to the public. Bad government, on the other hand, is corrupt and dishonest. It's overcomplicated and disorganized. It's under-resourced, just like Dale said, under-resourced, understaffed, and therefore non-responsive. 
It's inefficient, incompetent, unprofessional, and the government won't listen to the people. Uh, the qualities that we want to see in the city government is more responsibility and accountability, elected officials who are honest and professional and listen to the public, and appointed and career staff who are highly competent. Uh, we wanted to see more strategic, long-range thinking, and particularly an emphasis on attracting business. And we want to see city council members work more closely with citizens. We want to see a government that is simpler and faster and more responsive, as well as open to public input. And in the charter, uh, we talked about avoiding being too complicated, the idea here being, and I think Dale's group said something similar, or no, it was, it was Steve, that not everything that's a good idea needs to be in the charter. Some things can be left to ordinance. Um, we want to see a vetted appointment process for our career staff to ensure that they're qualified uh, for career or appointed staff. Um, we talked about some kind of explicit authority in the charter related to the economy and economic development. Our group also talked about reinstating the Ombudsman and the Civil Service Commission. Um, we talked a little bit about the council members, um, and I think I would say that we agreed that there should be at least some ward-based system, so didn't say specifically what it should be, except that it should not be 100% at large. And we talked a little bit about strong mayor versus council manager form, but did not really have an opinion as a group. Okay, I'm going to pull the mic back over to the front of the room. this part to an end, I want to make sure I redirect your attention to this Charter Review Advisory Committee. So once again, it's your way to become involved. So hopefully you know you to be started, uh, you'll have interest. And if you do, uh, you can finish it and uh, put it in this box up here. What I passed around as we were concluding the report outs, the Charter Review Survey. Survey. So they would like for you to complete that, uh, turn it in, um, to them and it will go online, right? Okay, so as we close out, like I said, uh, we have to integrate public comment. So with that said, I'm gonna uh, invite the chair back up, Cleo McGee, and her and Heidi will close this out. Please don't forget to get some of this food because you know, resources, resources, right? So make sure you can please use the food. Thank you very much. I can't thank you enough for coming out today to spend these hours with us. We know that you could be doing some other things, but thank you so much. And we really appreciate it and we will use the information, believe me. Um, everything that you've said this morning or written this morning, we will take it into account. Um, I just saw uh, Councilman Mays come in. I want to recognize him. And now, each of our, when we have each of our commission meetings, we do have a public comment period. Now, is there anything that has not been said this morning? Is there any concern, any opinion you may have regarding the process of revising the city charter? Anyone have any comment at all? Raise your hand. No question for I seen it and I didn't quite understand when it says the duty of the Charter Review Commission is to revise, change a little. It was three different things. So in that, you can do all three, not just set to one part of it. Am I? Well, our, well, with some, some charters, um, in some cities, there, there's the amendment process, but ours is to revise. And, uh, okay, the role of reviewing the 1974 city charter and determining the changes uh, that needed were amendments, 
and it was fully rewritten and modified. Our job is to revise this charter, and we can do that by going through, we, of course, we're going to go through each article. Mm -hmm. It may or may not be revised. Okay. That's how we will okay. complete but, it. But, but I guess the question was, are you able to do all three of them and not just set to just revise them? So, yeah. you, you, okay. We will not fully rewrite the charter. Okay. Okay. Um, and modification, I guess that's part of uh, actually revising because you know there's certain there's there's certain articles that may um, may only need a technical yeah. point, and but there may be something sure. else that would needs to be totally revised. Right, so. and that's what I wanted to make sure that you were able to implement all three of those and not yes. just stick to just one. All right. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I apologize, I had a definite conflict, but I made it. I just wanted to say that I've enjoyed the process that the Charter Revision Commission has had so far. I've sit in on meetings and it's been open. I can assume this was open as well, and then I would like to leave one piece of input. When it comes to that council, I would ask that you take a serious look whether it's three council people, five, seven, or nine, I want you to take a serious look at whether they should be full-time or part-time. My opinion is that people are so busy with other jobs, they don't pay close enough attention to their duties. And so I want that to be, take a serious look. I'm not advocating lower, but I am advocating quality. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I would ask uh, if uh, Heidi, if you would uh, write those suggestions down so that we will add them to the information that was gathered here today. Okay. And again, we want to make sure that you are involved and uh, don't make this the last time that you um, attend any of our meetings. As again, again, we meet on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month at 6.30 p.m. We also have a number of committee meetings, and if you go online, you can get the list of committee meetings and so forth. You can sit in on our committee meetings, and also uh, we have public comment during our committee meetings. So there's ample time for you to be involved. You, uh, again, we're online. You can uh, send information. You have our bios, and uh, our phone numbers are there. You can call us. We want to hear from you. We want your input, and please share this information with um, other your, with your neighbors and, and other friends uh, of the city. Um, Heidi will close out. I just want to mention for the survey, please do take time to fill it out. And if you wanted to take it home and fill it out at home, and you can bring it back to. The City Hall, we're also going to have drop boxes at the Flint Public Library, the Senior Community Centers, and at City Hall. It will also be put online so that you can, a link will go out, so we have all of your contact information, we'll share that with you, so you can also share that with others, so you can either choose to fill it out in uh, paper version or online. And it will be open for uh, the whole month of October, so we want to get as many people as possible to uh, respond to those questions that we, we presented. Uh, so with that, I really just want to thank everybody. I want to thank uh, everyone for taking their time to be here today. Please consider being involved in the Charter Review Advisory Committee. I see we've already got some people who have signed up, and thank you very much. That's going to be a really important way for you to uh, be involved and commit to the process. We are going to uh, start reviewing Article 1. Some information will be out on the website. The city attorney has pre pre prepared a review of Article 1, so we'll have that out for everyone to review and discuss. And uh, thank you again very much, everyone, for coming out today.